Hey guys, how's it going? This is Waj from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we're doing a direct comparison between the newly released Mac Pros and my own personal Hackintosh that I built pretty recently. Now the Mac Pros are out. Some customers are receiving them all around the world. We unfortunately in Canada haven't received ours. I'm still waiting on my order, but I briefly got a chance to actually do some benchmarking on the baseline version of the Mac Pro, the quad core configuration. And I really want to do this to kind of put it head to head against my own quad core Hackintosh that I built pretty recently. If you're interested in making your own Hackintosh, I have several videos on showing you how to do it, a real step-by-step -step process. So definitely check that out. You'll find links in the description and at the end of the video. Now, obviously it's important to note that we are testing out the baseline version of the Mac Pro, the quad-core configuration, which is the lowest tier of Apple's new workstation PCs. Now, most people who are getting these type of computers are probably gonna be specking out to just much as they want depending upon their budgets and their needs but I'm sure a lot of people are wondering how the Mac Pro architecture does especially on the single CPU configurations compared to a modestly priced and modestly powered PC. Now from a purely physical standpoint you'll notice that the Mac Pro is extremely compact. It's by far one of the most powerful, most compact PCs ever made. There's not a lot of PCs that can really compete with that architecture that Apple has created to make this workstation grade PC. Now I'm using a BitPhoenix Prodigy case on my Hackintosh which is a very common ITX motherboard case that is really quite versatile for a lot of different things. You can fit really big graphics cards. Now interestingly in terms of the internal specifications you'll notice some similarities especially when we talk about the C CPU in both the computers. You'll notice that the Mac Pro comes with a quad-core Intel processor clocked in about 1.7 gigahertz and I'll turbo up to 3.9 gigahertz. The cool thing about our Hackintosh that has a 3770K which is factory clocked a little bit lower than the one found in the Mac Pro but the cool thing is we can overclock this thing to a fairly significant amount. I actually achieved a 4.6 overclock which is pretty stable and I can probably do a little bit better if I upgrade the cooler. There's a lot more versatility when you take a look at what you can do on a custom built PC rather than a factory spec'd out machine from Apple. Now moving on to RAM, we have 16 gigs of DDR3 in the Hackintosh and about 12 gigs installed in the baseline configuration of the Mac Pro. Now interestingly, when we take a look at the storage configurations on both computers, they're both 256 gigs in capacity. But the interesting thing about the Mac Pro is that it is PCIe based flash memory. So very, very fast, theoretically faster than any single SSD possible. Now the cool thing is we've actually put a RAID 0 configuration on our Hackintosh. So we're actually running two 128 gigs SSDs from Samsung, which should give us very comparable speed in RAID 0. Now here's where things get even more interesting when we start looking at the graphics cards of these two computers. The Mac Pro comes with two D300 uh, GPUs which are AMD Fire Pro workstation grade GPUs so very fast. They both have two gigs of RAM and what you're looking at right now is the spec sheet of one D300 graphics card. So theoretically you should have the power of two when you look at the performance of the even the baseline version of the Mac Pro. Now when we take a look at the Hackintosh we have a monster GPU for our Hackintosh. We have the GTX NVIDIA Titan which has 6 gigs of GDDR5 RAM which is even more than two D300 Fire Pro cards. So very very comparable and we should get some monster performance from this GPU. Okay now since we got all that specification stuff out of the way let's take a look at the benchmarking results of my test. We're going to look Look at the big one which is Geekbench 3. On the Mac Pro we got about 14,452 of the stock configuration of the Mac Pro. On the Hackintosh since we have a pretty significant overclock we got a higher score of 15,496. Both results are in the 64-bit benchmark on Geekbench. The next thing that we're going to do is test out the flash memory of both computers. On the Blackmagic speed test our Mac Pro is getting about 9 135 megabytes per second read and about 748 megabytes per second write. 
Now our Hackintosh is performing very, very similarly thanks to the two RAID 0 configuration SSDs, getting about 905 megabytes per second read and about 781 write. So very, very similar speeds thanks to the configuration that we have on our Hackintosh. Next, we're gonna take a look at the Cinebench score on the Mac Pro and our Hackintosh. Now the Mac Pro performed pretty well at 73 frames per second on the OpenGL test, and the CPU got about 736 points. Now our Hackintosh actually did quite a lot better, scoring 126 frames per second, thanks to our massively powerful GTX Titan, and about 811 points, thanks to our overclocked CPU. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do another GPU test. We're gonna take a look at the Heaven benchmark and we're gonna run both computers and you'll see that we have a pretty clear winner on the GTX NVIDIA Titan side where it's getting about 80.4 frames per second versus 64.2 frames per second with even the two D300 graphics cards on the Mac Pro. And that reason is because with the Heaven benchmark, it seems to utilize OpenGL a little bit better than the Cinebench benchmark on Mac OS X. And uh, the bottom line is obviously the GTX card is definitely a more performance optimized card for gaming. It's not so much of a workstation card, but you can do a lot of compute GPU stuff with it. There's a lot of advantages of a GTX card depending upon what kind of applications you use, especially if you use any kind of CUDA processing. And uh, most of your decision making on whether you go for a Mac Pro or a custom PC is going to be based upon the applications you use. So in most instances, Final Cut Pro X is really optimized for the dual GPU configuration on the new Mac Pros. It's way faster than pretty much any editing software that you'll use on OS X. Uh, if you use uh, applications such as Adobe Photoshop or even uh, Premiere Pro or After Effects, they're gonna definitely benefit from the higher performing Mac Pros, but they're really not optimized at this point. We're gonna wait for uh, Adobe to release some updates to utilize the hardware in the Mac Pro as much as possible. Now, the last thing, of course, we're gonna talk about the price. Now, the base configuration of the Mac Pro starts at $3,000. Now, our own hack and cost about $1,920 all in all. A big driving price of that is going to be that GTX Titan card, which alone costs about $1,000. So it's half the price of the whole computer. Now, if you didn't need that graphics card, there's many other cards that will perform up to its level, depending upon your needs, and uh, do a great job for a fraction of the price. So uh, definitely keep that in mind when you're building your own Hackintosh. But this is a real great example of what you can do with uh a decent amount of money for almost you know half the price you can perform up to the level of the baseline Mac Pro and really optimally perform what it does at a fraction of the price but of course the big trade-off is going to be is that you have to build the computer yourself which many people may not want to do each of the hardware and software is not really properly optimized for Mac OS X. You can run Windows, again, uh, gives you a whole bunch of flexibility if you build your own Hackintosh. But uh, the big thing about buying a Mac Pro from Apple is that you have the full hardware and software support backed from the company. So it's really, you just pay your money and fingers crossed, everything works beautifully. There's really no hassle, no frustration that sometimes is uh, in the case when you build your own computer. Now, of course, the big decision will be up to you at the end, what you find most suitable to your needs. In my opinion, I think the Mac Pro is certainly an incredible piece of engineering. It, it, the architecture and the whole infrastructure of it is very interesting. And to see it that compact and the potential power that it can have is pretty incredible if you have the money. But uh, the big thing with Hackintosh, as we mentioned before, is versatility. 
and uh, with that done I definitely want to see your opinions I want to see what you guys think of the overall kind of comparison uh, tell me if you're interested in the Mac Pro I know it's a big cost but let's see if you guys think that it might be worth it down the road in terms of support and expandability is kind of interesting too in both regards but I'd love to hear your thoughts but if you have any questions at all about anything I talked about in this video please leave that on a comment down below make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. We'll see you later. Take care.